Hi everyone, I'm Eric Jones. I am joined here by my oldest son Cameron, then Claire, and then Olivia here. We're going to read you some, some storybooks for Discovery Center's first ever readathon. As president of the board of directors, I will say that we miss seeing you very, very much in the midst of this pandemic, but we're very excited to be able to invite you in for a little bit of fun time here in our home. So I've worked with Cameron, Claire, and Olivia to pick out some books that we really like that we'd like to share with you. Should we start with this one? Okay. So this book is called Brown Bear, Brown Bear, What Do You See? by Bill Martin Jr. and Eric Carr. Brown bear, brown bear, what do you see? I see a red bird looking at me. Lean forward, I think everyone can see you. Why don't you wave? All right, good, I think they can see you. Let's keep going. Red bird, red bird, what do you see? I see a yellow duck looking at me. Why do you want to read your children's book? Yellow duck, yellow duck, what do you see? I see a blue horse looking at me. Blue horse, blue horse, what do you see? I see a green frog looking at me. Green frog, green frog, what do you see? I see a purple cat looking at me. There's the green frog. Purple cat, purple cat, what do you see? I see a white dog looking at me. <laughs> white dog, white dog, what do you see? I see a black sheep looking at me. What noise does a dog make? Black sheep, black sheep, what do you see? I see a goldfish looking at me. Goldfish, goldfish, what do you see? I see a teacher looking at me. Teacher, teacher, what do you see? I see children looking at me. Children, children, what do you see? We see a brown bear, a red bird, a yellow duck, a blue horse, a green frog, a purple cat, a white dog, a black sheep, a goldfish, and a teacher looking at us. That's what we see. So that's the end of that book. This one next, Cam? The cloud. Ooh, this is a good one. I like the cloud. So this one is called Little Cloud, also by Eric Carl. Another Eric Carl. Dad, how can they hear you? Well, we have to speak loud if they want, if you want them to hear you. The clouds drifted slowly across the sky. Little Cloud trailed behind. The clouds pushed upward and away. Little Cloud pushed downward and touched the tops of the houses and trees. <laughs> That's Bambi. The clouds moved out of sight, and Little Cloud changed into a giant cloud. Oh. Whoa. Little Cloud changed into a sheep. Sheep and cloud sometimes look alike. What do you think? Sheep, cloud, yeah? Must be like cloud or sheep cloud. Little Cloud changed into an airplane. Little Cloud often saw airplanes flying through the clouds. Well, what happened to sheep trees? Little Cloud changed into a shark. Little Cloud once saw a shark through the waves of the ocean. Yeah. 
little cloud changed into two trees. Little cloud liked the way trees never moved and stayed in one place. It will stay on my foot. Isn't this purple? I love this book. Little cloud changed into a rabbit. Little cloud loved to watch rabbits dash across the meadows. Am I see a bunny? There's the bunny. Oh, hi. Then hi. Little Cloud changed hi. into a hat. Hi. Because Little Cloud changed into a clown and needed a hat. <laughs> the other clouds drifted back. They huddled close together. Little Cloud, Little Cloud, they called. Come back. Little Cloud drifted toward the clouds. And she's going now, now. Then all the clouds changed into one big cloud and... and it rained. It rained. And going inside. And going inside. Yeah, and then we go inside when it rains. And that's yeah. the end of Little Cloud. Yeah, that's double cream. Thanks. What's this one called, Claire? Nuffle Trixie. Trixie's one of the characters, but this one is called Nuffle Bunny by Mo Willems. I can't wait for the trying to train it for Dad. We'll get to we'll get to that one in just a minute, brother. Why did you want to train it for Dad? We're having special story time. You ready for it? Oh, look at the baby! Look at the baby! Look at it! That baby looks a little sad. We're going to have to cheer it up. So here it goes. Here's Nuffle Bunny. Not so long ago, before she could even speak words. Did you get here, Mommy and Daddy and a baby? Yeah, Mommy and Daddy and a baby. So, not so long ago, before she could even speak words, Trixie went on an errand with her daddy. There's Trixie, the little girl down there. And the mommy. Yep, and mommy's on the porch. Trixie and her daddy went down the block and through the park. Can you see that? I'm tired. I'm laying down. I'm tired. Well, we've got a bedtime story for last. You guys stay tuned for this one. They went past the school and into the laundromat. After the book can you lay down? Trixie helped her daddy put the laundry into the machine. Trixie helped her daddy put the laundry into the machine. She even got to put the money into the machine. What a lucky girl got to put the money in. Look at that. Then they left. Uh-oh. But a block or so later, Trixie realized something. Trixie turned to her dad and said, what'd she say? Aggle-flaggle. Aggle-flaggle-clabble. That's right, replied her daddy. We're going home. I don't think that's what Trixie wanted to do. Aggle-flaggle-clabble, said Trixie again. blaggle plabble Wumby Flappy, snurp. Mm -hmm. I think she was kind of sad. Mm -hmm. Now please, don't get fussy, said her daddy. Well, she had no choice. Trixie bawled. What noise do you think she made? Mm -hmm. Wah! And then she went boneless, which is that funny picture down there. She was not happy, was she? Yeah, no. Like she did everything she could to show how unhappy she was. By the time she was home, her daddy was unhappy too. Do you think everyone's going to know how much we like this there book? She went home. Look at that. This page is taped together. This is one of our favorites. As soon as Trixie's mommy opened the door, she asked, where is Nuffle Bunny? Uh oh. I think they left Nuffle Bunny behind. Mm. 
The whole family ran down the block, and they ran through the park. I think they were going to get Nuffle Bunny. There's the, there's the mommy. Yeah, now the mommy's coming. And mommy and daddy. And daddy, yeah. They zoomed past the school and back into the laundromat. Trixie's daddy looked for Nuffle Bunny and looked and looked, but Nuffle Bunny was nowhere to be found. So Trixie's daddy decided to look harder until, what did they find? Nuffle Bunny! And those were the first words Trixie ever said. Do you want to pick one out for us, buddy? I don't want to like buy more books. How about two more books? Let's do the Rainbow Fish Good Pick List. There are no more. We'll do one of yours next, okay? So this one's the Rainbow Fish by Marcus Pfister. This is from Grandma Barb's house. This is where we learned about this book. A long way out in the deep blue sea there lived a fish. Not just an ordinary fish, but the most beautiful fish in the entire ocean. His scales were every shade of blue and green and purple with sparkling silver scales. See those scales. The other fish were amazed at his beauty. They called him Rainbow Fish. Come on, Rainbow Fish, they would call. Come and play with us. But Rainbow Fish would just glide past, proud and silent, letting his scales shimmer. One day, a little blue fish followed after him. Rainbow fish, she called. Wait for me. Please give me one of your shiny scales. They are so wonderful, and you have so many. You want me to give you one of my special scales? Who do you think you are, cried the rainbow fish. Get away from me. Shocked, the little blue fish swam away. He was so upset, he told all his friends what had happened. From then on, no one would have anything to do with the rainbow fish. They turned away when he swam by. What good were the dazzling, shimmering scales? Oh, that one's ripped too. We must really like this book. What good were the dazzling, shimmering scales with no one to admire them? Now he was the loneliest fish in the entire ocean. One day, he poured out his troubles to the starfish. I really am beautiful. Why doesn't anybody like me? I can't answer that for you, said the starfish. But if you go beyond the coral reef to a deep cave, you will find that the wise octopus, maybe she can help you. The rainbow fish found the cave. It was very dark inside, and he couldn't see anything. Then suddenly... Two eyes caught him in their glare, and the octopus emerged from the darkness. Look at that big octopus and his white eyes. Can I see? Yeah. Oh, there's one. There he is. I have been waiting for you, said the octopus with a deep voice. The waves have told me your story. This is my advice. Give a glittering scale to each of the other fish. You will no longer be the most beautiful fish in the sea, but you will discover how to be happy. I can't, said the rainbow fish, as he started to say, but the octopus had already disappeared into a cloud of ink. Give away my scales? My beautiful shining scales? Never. How could I ever be happy without them? Suddenly, he felt the light touch of a fin. The little blue fish was back. Rainbow fish, please don't be angry. I just want one little scale. Dad, I thought you were done. I have to Okay, that was good. Well, 
The rainbow fish wavered. Yeah. Only one very, very small shimmery scale, he thought. Well, maybe I wouldn't miss just one. Carefully, the rainbow fish pulled out the smallest scale and gave it to the little fish. Thank you, thank you very much, the little blue fish bubbled playfully as he trucked, as he tucked the shiny scale in among his blue ones. A rather peculiar feeling came over the rainbow fish. For a long time, he watched the little, little blue fish swim back and forth with his new scale glittering in the water. The little blue fish whizzed through the ocean with his scale flashing, so it didn't take long before the rainbow fish was surrounded by the other fish. Everyone wanted a glittering scale. The rainbow fish shared his scales left and right, and the more he gave away, the more delighted he became when the water around him filled with glimmering scales. He at last felt home among the other fish. Finally, the rainbow fish had only one shining scale left. His most prized possessions had been given away, yet he was very happy. Come on, rainbow fish, they called. Come on and play with us. Here I come, said the rainbow fish, and, happy as a splash, he swam off to join his friends. So I think that was a good book that taught us a little bit about sharing. Mm -hmm. So before we read a couple more books, I just wanted to thank everybody for joining us for the readathon, and we hope you're having fun today. Can you guys say bye? Bye. Can you say bye? Bye.